Hi everyone, it's Elliot from Tutorial Edge. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can get up and running with the getstream.io product offering and building a simple chat solution. Now, before we dive in, it's important to note that I already have a GetStream account set up and it's a maker's account. Now, what this means is it's free for up to 3 million requests per month, which is a fairly substantial figure. And this means it's perfect for the hobbyists amongst you or people that are wanting to develop out proof concepts before they take it to the next level. Now, if you're interested in following this tutorial along, then you can sign up for your own Maker's account by following the link in the description of this video below. Cool, so with that bit out of the way, let's dive into the code and start developing. Cool, so let's start off by creating a new folder within our project. I'm going to call this internal. And within this, I'm going to create another directory called chat. Now let's create a new file, chat.go which will be the root of this internal package. And let's call the package chat at the top here. Cool, so let's start off by defining a service struct and a constructor. So this is going to instantiate a pointer, service or an error, and let's do return service and nil for now. Okay, so the next thing we're going to want to do is to import the get stream package. So let's do stream github.com slash get stream slash stream chat go slash v6, which is the latest version of this package. Next, we're going to also want to go get this. So go get in the terminal to make sure that it's added to our go mod file. And then within our constructor function, we want to do the following. So we want to do client or error is equal to stream dot new client and we want to pass in the API key and the API secret. Now these aren't currently defined so let's define them above and let's do API key and we're going to pick it up from the underlying environment. So let's do os.getenv, we'll do get stream API key and we'll do the same for the API secret os.getenv get stream API secret. We're going to save that. It's going to automatically import the OS package. Next, as we're getting an error, let's check the error. So if error does not equal nil, what do we want to do? Let's do log.println and let's do error setting up the client. And then let's do error.error. Finally, we want to return at this point. So we want to return, we'll say nil and error. Cool, so we have a constructor function. Let's open up our main.go file and let's do the following. So let's do chat service is equal to chat.new. And we also need to handle the error. So let's do if error does not equal nil, we're going to do fmt. We'll keep it consistent. We'll do log.println error. And for now, this is unused. So let's use the underscore syntax. And then let's try and run this project in the terminal. So go run main.go. And we've got a syntax error. So let's go back into the constructor. And let's use the same underscore syntax here. Go run main.go. And as you can see, We've had an error when we're setting up the client because we need to export the API key and the API secret. Now, from the dashboard in getstream.io, you're going to want to retrieve the API key and the API secret. Once you have them, you can then do export getstream API key as equal to the, the key. And then you're also going to want to do the same for the API secret. And secret like so. Once you've set these two values with the real values, then we'll be able to rerun this code and we should see that we've been able to successfully connect. Cool, so let's try this now. Let's do go run main.go now that we've set these two values. 
And as you can see, no error has been returned from the new client function here. So we have our client set up. Let's reset this. And then let's do response or error is equal to client dot create channel. And this will be the channel which we send and receive messages to and from. So the first argument is the context. So let's do context background. The channel type is messaging. The channel ID, let's do my super awesome channel. And the user ID, let's set this to channel ID for now. And then the channel request. So let's do ampersand stream channel request and we'll just leave this empty for now. Now as we're getting an error, let's check it. So if error does not equal nil, we want to do log.printline print line error creating the channel and let's also add the error and then let's return nil and the error like so otherwise let's log dot print f and we'll do percentage plus v slash n and the response so let's navigate into the terminal and run this again and as you can see it has successfully created the channel and it's logged out the response object here Cool, so now that we've got this, we want to add the channel, which is a pointer to a stream.channel object within our service struct definition. And then within the return statement, we want to do channel, and we'll set this equal to response.channel, like so. Perfect, so at this point, we have a channel up and running with GetStream. Now, the channel's fairly empty right now, so we want to be able to add new users. So let's do that now with a new method down below. This will take a pointer receiver to the service object we've defined, and let's do add user. We'll take in the context.context .context and the user ID, which will be string, and let's return an error if we fail to add this user. So within here, let's do response or error is equal to s.channel.add members. This will take in the context and a slice of type string, which will pass in the user ID like so. Let's do if error does not equal nil. Let's do log.println error adding member, member like so. And then let's add the error. And let's return this error. Cool. Otherwise, what do we want to do? Well, we're curious what the response is. So let's do fmt dot or log dot print f and percentage plus v slash n and the response. Finally, we'll return nil to signify that we've been able to successfully add this user. Now, what good is adding a user if they can't do anything? Well, let's add a new method that will allow them to send a message. So let's do send message. Once again, we'll take in context.context. .context. We'll take in the user ID so that we can identify who's sending the message. The message itself, and this will be of type string, and we'll return an error. So let's do response or error is equal to s.channel.send message. We'll pass in the context. We'll pass in the at stream.message and it's uppercase. And then within here, we want to say the text is going to be equal to the message that we passed in as a parameter. And the final argument is the user ID, like so. Once again, let's check the error. So if error does not equal nil, log.println, error sending message. And let's do error.error, like so. Once again, we're curious what this is going to return. So let's do log.printf percentage plus v slash n and the response. And then finally we'll return nil. Perfect. So now we are cooking with gas. We can now go into the main.go file and let's create this chat service and let's do chat service dot and we'll say add user. So this is going to take in the context. So let's do up here just to save ourselves a little bit of hassle. 
context.background, pass in the context and the user ID. So we'll say this is user ID one. Let's get the error. If error does not equal nil or no, and let's print out the error. Also, let's do return statements here, just so we are exiting if we do encounter an error. Cool. So we've got the new user added. Let's do error is equal to chat service dot send message. We'll pass in the context again. We'll pass in the user ID and let's do hello world. Once again, let's check the errors. So if error does not equal nil, log dot print line sad and let's do error dot error and return once again and perfect let's try and run this now and as you can see no errors have been printed out however this isn't very informative so let's go back into the chat.go and let's change this slightly so let's say successfully added a new user and then we'll print out the object and then let's also say successfully sent a message. Once again, let's open up the terminal and run this again. And ta-da, you can see the success log statements out in the terminal below. Now, currently our app allows us to create a channel, add a user, and then send a message. However, we don't have the ability to view those messages that have been sent. So let's change this now. Let's create another method and we'll do print messages. And let's do a for loop. So for message in range s dot channel and messages like so. Let's do log dot print and we'll do print f percentage plus v slash n and the message. Let's copy this and navigate to our main function and then let's do chat service dot print messages. Let's open up the terminal, go run main dot go. And as you can see, all of the messages that we've sent have now been printed out. So we've got the channel ID, my super awesome channel. And we've got the messages. So if you squint your eyes, you can see the text, hello world. And helpfully, they also include the HTML. So if, for example, you were exposing these messages via a REST API, then you'd be able to insert them directly into your page and make them render really nicely, which is an awesome feature. Now, that's all we're going to cover in this tutorial. Now, just to recap, we've been able to successfully create a messaging application on top of GetStream's product offering that allows us to create distinct channels, add users and send messages, as well as print out those messages in the space of about 10 to 12 minutes. Cool. So that is all we're going to cover within this tutorial. Now, let's just recap what we've been able to successfully achieve. Now, we've been able to define a new chat service that allows us to instantiate the channel upon which we're going to chat on. We've been able to add users to this channel. We've then been able to send messages via this user ID. And finally, we've been able to then print out the messages that are stored on this channel. Now, we've been able to do this all within the space of around 10 to 15 minutes, which just highlights how incredibly powerful the underlying GetStream product is for developing production ready chat applications. Now let's say for example I wanted to moderate or view any of the channels. We can see in the chat explorer for example in the GetStream dashboard I'm able to view the messages, the members. So currently we've got member with the ID of one. We can see when they were created, updated, we can ban them, we can shadow ban, we can give them different roles. We can also see all of the messaging that has been sent. So you can see I've run this app a couple of times to make sure that it all works. You can see the HTML, the text, the IDs of these messages. It's just all there. Everything you expect to see in a fully fledged messaging app is there and waiting for you. 
Now, let's say you wanted to expose this functionality via REST API endpoints. You know, the ability is there. You could easily start to send messages and then print them out and incorporate them into various parts of your own developer applications. Now, just to recap, you can unlock all of this functionality through the maker accounts. So you can get access to the enterprise grade features, functions, and UI components for completely free for your startup or side project by signing up for a maker account in the description below. Now that's all from me and this tutorial. If you've liked it, then please leave a like on this video. If you've got any comments, then please let me know in the comment section down below. And please subscribe to the channel for more on the GetStream product offerings.